I think with my experience in doing other sports, it's never been about the sport. It's always been about riding the wave. Mm. For me, surfing is the ride. It's the experience. And however I choose to do it with a different tool is a different experience. And I love big waves to my core. I think it's given me my life's purpose in a way mm. to put myself in positions, to work on equipment, to build my you know physical being into what it is to survive. So going out and riding big waves is the same to me. It's just a different approach. Like when I see guys getting incredibly big waves and paddling into huge tubes, I want to do the same thing. You mm. know, it's like, I don't feel like I'm limited because I do toe and surfing. And when I go toe and surfing, um, you know, I'm always trying to look back at old footage of, you know, the strap crew back in the day. And now I mainly watch snowboarding because mm. they're riding a big frozen mountain and they're doing tricks. And it's like, that's my inspiration for that. And again, the experience of riding a big wave, be it on a gun or be it on a towing board, I just want to surf 12 hours in a row because it's such a rare experience and it makes me feel so good as a human being. And it puts me in check. It brings me back down to earth. It's grounding and I find only benefits from the whole experience. So if everyone's paddling and it's a paddle day because of the wind, mm. dude, I'm going to paddle all day. Right. And that's going to be my focus. And uh, if there's if it's really windy and no one's paddling and it's not ideal for a paddling, I'm going to get on the tow rope and I'm going to catch 50 waves. And um, they benefit each of them. Like the confidence that you get from paddling and sitting in the pit mm. and getting comfortable dodging huge waves and then taking off late and just getting under the lip of a huge tube and then hopefully getting spat out or getting absolutely destroyed. That goes to toe and surfing because now toe and surfing, you can position yourself the same place, but you're on a tiny board that goes really fast. And it's funny when we're talking about Jaws, Piahi on a gun, you're always feeling like you're behind the eight ball. Like, oh, I'm dropping in bottom turning, please hold open. Cause right. your boards are way slower. There's a lot of drag. You have a, you know, a hose for a leash behind you slowing yourself down and then on the tow board is the opposite problem you're going too fast right you're always but so to get barreled on a tow board you have to look like you're taking off on a closeout right it's and all positioning wise it's all positioning yeah. like the wave needs to look like a perfect closeout because no matter how deep you think you are you can be 10 feet deeper right so the comfortability of getting destroyed paddling and getting used to those experiences and always feel that feeling of being behind behind the wave and not keeping up translates to towing all of a sudden it's it's a common view and i'm like well if i need to hit the gas pedal i can pump something i can't do on a gun right and i think that's why they've been feeding one another so well and it just goes down to the root as to what i love to do out there it's just i just love riding big waves i just love it you talked uh, earlier about also just hunting big waves down globally. And you're someone who has a really intimate experience at a number of the famous big wave spots, Mavericks and Toto Santos and Waimea and Piahe. And you've, you've spoken a little bit about Piahe, but I'm interested in your opinion on the nuances and differences between sort of those four spots, There's Mavericks yeah. and Waimea, Totos and Piahe. How do you kind of rate them in your mind? And, and what are sort of the benefits or scary parts of each? Well, I think there's there's big waves in the world and then there's big waves in the league of their own. Like there's something that sort of changes, you know, um, a place like Mavericks, the, the, the takeoff spots like 10 feet. It's mm. the smallest, it's like the most perfect in terms of paddling because there's one place that you can take off from. Jaws is about 200 yards wide and there's three places you can kind of take off there. And, and so, I mean, pound for pound, each one could potentially kill you. Mavericks has killed people and it's due to that hole down. I would say the thrashing at Mavericks is, it's always bad, but it's not as bad as maybe say Jaws in my experience. But what's gnarly about it is the hold down. You get stuck in these ledges and you just feel like you're, if you feel claustrophobic, that's a good place to go. If you like feeling claustrophobic, <laughs> that's a good place to go because- Most of our audience does, so that's helpful. Yeah, so it just feels like you're trapped in a box and there's nothing you can do. And that's, and that, that's at Mavericks. That's at Mavericks. I think the, would the wetsuit have something to do with that too? You're wearing thick rubber compared to these other places. But then again, too, I feel, I feel more safe and comfortable getting pounded underwater with a five mil booties, gloves, and a hood. It's like an impact suit. Yeah, you just yeah. feel like you feel like you're being cradled underwater. <laughs> Whereas sometimes surfing warm water spots, be it at Cloudbreak or Jaws or right. Waimea, um, you're you feel exposed, sort of. You know, you're wearing the bare minimum of float and inflation, 
for, you know, so you don't overheat and for comfortability. Sure paddling and everything right and so but then underwater you feel vulnerable like oh my gosh like i could feel it directly on my skin <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then now let's throw in a huge spin which is going to a place like nazare right and nazare is the world's biggest beach break and it's that place is just psycho i mean it just kind of it makes you feel comfortable at all these other big waves because all these other big waves have channels right nazare is a spot you can't paddle without a jet ski like, this is the one wave you always need jet ski assistance. Like, sure, you can catch one good wave, maybe get lucky and paddle back out. You're probably inevitably going to get caught inside, and you're probably going to get blown to the sand at one point. And then you're going to walk two miles to <laughs> around the point to get back out because there's no paddling out. Even jet skis barely make it out, right? It's all about timing. And so what I take away from all of these different spots is – there, there, there's characters to them. There's the nuances, and they really, really help kind of each experience at the the other. I mean, Jaws to me is like going to pipe. It's perfect wave. You know, it's backdoor pipeline mm -hmm. um, or massive V land, as some would say. But that's where you go. That's where high performance and big wave surfing lives. At a place like Mavericks, that's where the steepest and, and craziest drops are. It's mm -hmm. the biggest slab in the world when you really think about it. And then at Nazare, it's survival. It's getting, it's wrangling the beast. You know, it's confronting, you know, you're David and that's Goliath and it's breaking everywhere. And um, I figure now, and I really understand now, the more I, opportunities I get to surf big waves, the more I could find comfort in my experiences. It's not comfort in the big waves. Mm -hmm. You never will feel comfortable unless you're crazy. And I think you'll uh, ultimately um, like, You'll, you'll ultimately, like, pay the price. Um, but you find comfort in um, in your experiences. And that's why guys like Shane Dorian, Greg Long, Ian Walsh, um, Twiggy, um, and there's many others, you know, they're the older guard. They're, some of them are old enough to, like, you know, be some of the young guns' parents. <laughs> but they have the experience. And big wave surfing at this point in time is more important to be about experience than – you know, a young buck just trying to stomp his way in because it takes years to acquire all of it. Do you like that? Well, if so, subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there and then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.